Hello, Sri, can you hear me now? Hello, Sri, can you hear me now? Hello. Hello, Mahesh, can you hear me? I can oh, hear yes, you. Is the problem with my headphones or what? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello. Hello, Mahesh. Sri, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hmm. What did you do now? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I finished one class now, so I just logged off that go to meeting and logged into it. So there's nothing I did. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I think the problem is with my headphones. So. No, oh, okay, okay. No problem. So, shall we start? Yeah, sure. It looks like uh, Vijay is not going to join today. We, uh, she said she has a doctor appointment. Okay. So, oh. did you take the class on Saturday? Or? No, she said to uh, stop it. I mean, since you are not there, it's a three and a half hour session, right? Yeah. So, she said okay. So we cancelled it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what we were discussing about in the previous class is the union transformation, right? We have seen the practicals for the uh, rotor transformation. So what you, what we need to do is now the union transformation. I have given you entire information about the union transformation on this class. So we did on that class we did not do the practicals about union transformation, correct? Yeah. Do you remember what we discussed about the union transformation? Whatever we have discussed about union? Yeah, I mean it's just like how union works in SQL. I mean to club the data from two or more tables. Correct. Vertically. Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sharing my screen. One second. Why it is not giving my sharing option? Can you see my screen? No, right? No, I can't see. Oh, 
they should make me organizer i am not the organizer now that's the reason why i can't say it you can uh, okay they made me organizer now mm -hmm. okay yeah presenter sorry or not organizer presenter i have reinstalled informatica in my machine so you might not be seeing the same old folders what we have okay i just mm. so i'm what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you practicals about the union transformation okay see you can see my screen now right yeah i can see it show user currently i am in inf source which is a schema in my oracle database okay here i am creating two source tables create table emp underscore u in n1 as select star from scott dot emp edit basically what i'm what the practical i am going to show you is i am going to create two source tables nothing but uh, with the same data basically mm -hmm. and uh, i'll use the union transformation to merge those tables data into one table in the target so if you look at here now i have four tables emp underscore union 1 emp underscore union 2 they both have the same data basically duplicate select star from emp underscore union 1 and changing the set page size equal to 30 set line size equal to 200 clear screen so select star from EMP underscore UN1. This is what is the data I have in one table. Similarly, other table as well. EMP underscore union2. There is nothing difference. So I just have 14, row, 14 rows in one table, 14 rows in another table. Total 28 rows. See, now this is my target. Show user. Nothing but this is INF TGT Informatica target in same Oracle database different user okay. okay here I have a table called select star from T underscore EMP underscore UN this is my target table which does not have any data alright mm -hmm. now I'm going to the designer I've already connected to the repository which is dev REP I'm connecting to the folder by double clicking on it the folder name is class john 10 2011 now see I'm importing the source sources import from database this is my ODBC ORCL underscore infra source mm -hmm. so I'm importing these two tables okay then target import from database INF target this is my target table T underscore EMP underscore union so I have imported both source and targets I'm creating a mapping you can look at the sources here EMP underscore union 1 and union 2 and targets T underscore EMP underscore union so I'm creating a mapping m underscore t underscore emp underscore un stands for union transformation example okay <coughs> I'm copying both sources into the mapping designer so as soon as I copy both sources what I'll get source qualifiers exactly two source qualifiers now I'm creating a union transformation you can use the shortcut U to create the union transformation or you can create it from the transformations tab as well correct so I'm using the shortcut this is 
union transformation is created. So this is a bit different. See, we need to merge the data from two pipelines. This is one pipeline, nothing but one source. This is another source. Correct? So I need to copy the source columns from the first source into the union transformation. I am copying them. Once you copy them, once you copy them, say edit, do not copy the other one. Okay. Okay. Say edit. <coughs> Excuse me. Similar to the similar to the names. Shakil, can you mute yourself? Similar to the groups we have created in the router transformation, we have to create groups here because here it is multiple input groups and one output group. If you remember the router example we have done, it is multiple single input group and multiple output groups. Whereas union is multiple input groups and single output group. This is one group that we have already copied into the union transformation from one of the sources. Okay, and this I have to create another group here. This is this is EM. I'm just giving a name to this group EMP1. This is EMP2. This is a group name. That's all. You do not have to do anything. Just create two groups because I am merging the data from two sources. There are, you should, in union transformation, you do not have to perform anything on the union transformation except creating groups. Just create groups, say apply and OK. Now, if you see here, you have another group which is EMP2 group. Now, link the data from second source into the union transformation link the data from second source into the union transformation. Alright, now I have linked the source 1 which is one pipeline and the source 2 which is the second pipeline. Now if you see there is one output group also. This is a output group. From here you need to send the data to the next transformations or target. <coughs> Excuse me next transformation or target. Now I am copying my target definition also into the mapping designer. I am connecting the fields from my output group. You cannot connect the fields from here EMP1 group and EMP2 group. Look at the symbols here. They are only input groups. This first group is the output group. So copy them, I mean select them Sorry, don't select all of them, just select these fields using the shift on your keyboard and link into the <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> link it to the target. That's all that you need to do in the union transformation. Clear? So I'm saving it. So it gets saved and validated. You can see the message below, notification below, it is saved and validated. I'm creating a workflow for it. Nothing but first I need to create this session which is tasks create my mapping name is m underscore t underscore emp underscore union create this is what is my mapping okay and then done I have created the session so I am editing I need to provide the connections to my both sources which is EMP underscore union 1 which is a connection is already available which is ORCL underscore INFSRC this is the connection to relational connect to my source schema and this is the relational connection to my source and this is a relational connection to my target. So I need to change the connection to target here because this exists in a different schema. Alright, 
I am saying apply and OK. So I have created a session and I have specified my source and target connections to the session. I am creating a workflow which is WF underscore copy the session I workflow is created and saved and validated now I am running the workflow remember we do not have any data in my target table that is in our target table that is t underscore emp underscore union now if I run this ETL what should happen Fourteen rows. How many rows into the target? Fourteen. How many sources are we using, Sri? Two. So, what? How many number of records exist in each source? Fourteen foreign, but union removes duplicates, right? No, I said union transformation works as a union all operators in Oracle, not union operator union transformation would not eliminate duplicates union transformation works like a union all operator in oracle it does not work like a union operator okay. so it sends out all rows to the target it would not eliminate any duplicates clear if you look at here which is yeah. 28 and 28 and if you look at our target table that is what we are going to have set to page size equal to 30 set line size equal to 200 select stars <coughs> I'm executing the same query you can see at 28 rows now I have a question um, to you all here. Now I want to eliminate these duplicates. How do I do that in the same ETL? Is there any way to do it? The answer exists. Union all. I'm sorry? I mean, what do you mean by union all Shakil? We can what uh, I set in the uh, properties uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we want to make it like a union all transformation. What is it? There is nothing you need to set in the union transformation. You should not touch the properties of union transformation. Okay. Then how do you specify that? It is, not, it is not it is not in this not transformation. This transformation. You, can transformation you can use another transformation to eliminate duplicates. Okay. So what is that what other is transformation, transformation to eliminate duplicates? You know all? Do we have a transformation called union all? No. But you're saying you're union saying all, union, union all, right? all, right? No, no. How do we how do we get that uh, how do we to get that get in this uh, To remove the duplicates, we yeah. need to use yeah. another transformation then. Right. right. That is what I am asking. What is the other transformation that we can use? Sorter. Sort. Yeah. yeah. Sorter, there is a property called distinct. You can select that property so it eliminates duplicates and send the 14 rows to the target. So try out that. See whether it works or not. <coughs> use this order after the where will you use this order where will you use this order you can use it after the union transformation correct use it and do it <coughs> I have re-executed this ETL again. How many rows I am going to have in my target? 
I have re-executed this ETL again three. How many rows I'm going to have? You can see that below, if you look at the, uh, I'm in the workflow manager window. If you look at the below output window, you can see start execution of the workflow. This is done first and I've also done the same thing second time. How many rows I'm going to have it in my target? 28 more. Yeah. In total? 56. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So whatever the transformations that we have discussed, as of today, seven transformations are pretty straightforward and simple in nature. As you keep learning, <coughs> The next transformations are bit complicated transformations which we have already started in the previous class, source qualifier transformation. <coughs> Excuse me. Source qualifier transformation, correct? So what do you remember about the source qualifier transformation? Question to both of you. To write the Informatica generated statement to select the data from the source table? No. I'm just asking what is source qualifier? I mean, you're talking about the property of a source qualifier transformation. That is SQL override. So if I ask you what is the purpose of a source qualifier transformation, what will you tell? What is the use of it? First thing, first point. To get the data from the table. Correct. It is source call for a transformation represents the data that integration service reads from the source. Source call for a transformation represents the data that the integration service reads from the source. Okay. Inform I said Informatica generates the query. How will it generate the query? It generates the query based on the columns that you have in the source qualifier transformation. It generates a query based on the fields that you are, have in the source qualifier transformation. <coughs> so, as of today, we have done a lot of ETLs for seven ETLs, right? Seven examples, seven transformations we see. And I never showed you the query that Informatica generates. If you look at any session, whatever I we have done the examples or whatever the practicals that you have done, every session will have something called session log. See, you can get the session log, run properties. This is run properties what we are doing every day. Something similar to that, right click and say get session log. What is this session log? session log captures the entire information about your ETL. Nothing but from the point it started to till the point it is ended. Whatever the tasks that happen in between, everything is captured in the session log. So this session log is created for every session you run. This session log is created for every session you run. You can see the information about the SQL query in the session log. It is difficult to understand the session log at the beginning. If you look at it here, it captures every information. See, initializing the session, repository name, dev underscore REP, service name, server name, nothing but your integration service name, dev underscore INT, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, your integration service, server name is in either it is integration service name or server name, both are same. Folder name is class jan 102011. So it has the information about everything. When it started, you can see the timings, what has happened. It will take some time for you to understand the session log. You'll have to read it multiple times. When I say read it, you have to look at it multiple times. Only then you can understand. So I'm giving you some of the example. If you look at the statement over here, read 14 rows, read 0 error rows from the source table EMP underscore union 2. So it is saying it has read 14 rows from the source. 
union 2 this is one source and this is another source union 1 it has read 14 rows no error rows so you can see the lot of information in the session log so for this context what I wanted to show you is the the query that it has generated to read the data from source C can you see the query here select EMP dot EMP underscore union 1 if it is not visible let me know I'll paste it paste it on the notepad okay <coughs> this is the query that it has generated to read the data from T underscore EMP underscore union one table sorry EMP underscore union one table I'm pasting that into the notepad This is what is a query that it has generated. Select EMP underscore union, nothing but a table name dot EMP number, e name, job, manager, hire date, salary, and commission, and DEPT number from EMP underscore union one. If you look at the columns in the select class, they exactly match with the columns in your source qualifier transformation. And to be more specific, they match the fields that exists in the that <coughs> source qualifier and then fields that are linked to the next transformation that are linked to the next transformation for example <coughs> if I don't connect the DEPT number from source qualifier to the union transformation you would not have that column in the this query DEPT number column because I am not passing the data from source qualifier to the next transformation. So source qualifier transformation represents the rows that the integration service reads from the source and it also represents the fields. Whatever you have in the source qualifier only those fields exist in your query. Okay, This is to show you that Informatica generates a SQL query for every ETL that you create to read the data from relational sources. Now, going back to the source qualifier transformation. Now, <coughs> see. I'm sorry. <coughs> So I'm creating a source table just to uh, do an example with the source qualifier transformation. What is this? This is my source. Show user. Okay. Create table EMP underscore SQ stands for source. Oh, sorry. create table EMP underscore SQ <coughs> yes select star from Scott dot EMP table created this is my source and my target this is CLSCR select star from tab here I have a table called T underscore EMP underscore SQ which this table I'll use as a target so this table doesn't have any data EMP underscore SQ okay now see <coughs> I'm creating a mapping first I need to import the source right clear all import from database source this is my source table target clear all import from database
my target name is sq t underscore emp underscore sq okay i have both sources and targets creating a new mapping t underscore emp underscore sq now see <coughs> source target See here we are not using any other transformations. We are just going to talk about the source qualifier transformation. Now see <coughs> linking the ports from source to target. Hey. Please give me a minute. Okay. This is my mapping. <clears throat> this is the source definition. This is the source qualifier transformation, and this is the target. Now, see, <clears throat> I'm creating it, <clears throat> saving it. <coughs> Session. S underscore EMP underscore SQ. Sorry. T underscore EMP underscore SQ create done sorry this is my session edit source proper target so I am changing the connection creating a workflow saved and validated now see <clears throat> my target table doesn't have any data which is Select star from T underscore EMP underscore SQ. My source has 14 rows. I am running this ETL. Start workflow. <coughs> this ETL got succeeded. 14 rows, 14 rows. Now let me show you the session log. See, Informatica has generated the query to read the data from this table. Select EMPSQ dot <coughs> This is what is the query that it has generated. If you look at the all the columns here, they match with the columns in your source qualifier transformation and the fields that are being sent to the next transformation are target. <coughs> <coughs> now, this is about source qualifier. Now, what I want to do for example, I am editing the source qualifier transformation. First this is transformation tab you can if you want to rename it you can rename and write some description ports tab port name data type precision scale and input and output input and output next is the properties tab 
out of this properties tab, this is the one that we have discussed on uh, <coughs> on the in the previous class. The first property is SQL query. I've told you now if you look at here we have seen the query that Informatica has generated to read the data from this table. If you want to see what Informatica generates before running the ETL itself, go to the SQL query, click here. Now you need to say generate SQL. Before you need to gen say generate SQL, you need to connect to the relevant <coughs> you need to connect to the relevant source ODBC remember this ODBC we have created to import the sources and targets same ODBC we can use it here to connect to the same database so mine is INFSRC so now say generate SQL so this SQL and this SQL matches there is no difference between both of them this is after running the ETL you can see in the session log but before running the ETL itself what is the query that Informatica generates you can say generate SQL here now <coughs> the proper the purpose of this property is it is not to look at the just to look at the query in case if you want to do any modifications to the query you can do that such as if you want to filter the data you can filter it or if you want to do a group by you can do it or if you want to do this distinct you can do that so let's come to the modification of this query later on so I'm just showing you the query here that's all now the second property is user defined join what is this user defined join is <coughs> you can join tables that exists in the same database you can join the tables that exist in the same database using the source qualifier transformation nothing but you can join the homogeneous sources when I say homogeneous sources tables should exist in the same database and same <coughs> schema tables should exist in the same database and in the same schema only then you can join the those tables using the source qualifier transformation here you can specify the join condition in the user defined column property you can specify the join condition remember see currently I am not using the source qualifier to join multiple sources I am using the source qualifier just to read the data from one table in case if there is a requirement to read the data from multiple tables you can also do that using the source qualifier by specifying the join condition in the user defined column join column <coughs> second proper next property is source filter in case if you want to filter the data you can enter the filter condition here next is number of sorted ports in case if you want to sort the data you can you need to specify the number of sorted ports see here there is something different for this property here <clears throat> you see the ports here order of the ports employee number employee name job manager you need to remember that order because here the port is <coughs> I'm sorry the option says number of sorted ports it does not say number of the sorted port means if I want to if you want to sort the data based on employee number you need to say one here so if you say one what happens is it sorts the data based on employee number because the first field in the transformation is employee number <coughs> or if you say number of sorted ports is three what happens can both of you tell me any one of you Hello. Shakil, no answer. 
just read out this property name clearly. It says number of sorted ports. I said if you place three one here. Will be sorted. I'm sorry? Only three ports will be sorted. What do you mean by that? Only three ports will be sorted. From the data there. Can you tell me the okay. I have the here, right? Query. So <clears throat> Can you tell me the query here? Yeah, Only three yeah, ports yeah, means sorted means. Yeah, you can uh, probably uh, yeah, first, second, third, those three columns that uh, data might be sorted. Correct. Correct. Informatica generates. Informatica sorts the data based on first three fields, not only on the third field, since you have said three. It is number of sorted ports. So, if you say four, it sorts the data based on the first four fields. So, it generates a query something like this. Select star from this table name, order by EMP number, comma E name, comma job, comma manager. That is how this property works. Now, I am asking a question. I don't want to sort the data based on employee number in multiple columns. I want to sort the data based on only the one column that is manager. How do you do that here? Can you do that? Okay. I am giving the answer myself. Yes, we can do it. The only thing that you need to do is move the manager column to the top. So, and specify one here. So, it sorts the data based on the <coughs> manager column. Now tracing level we will see later on. Select distinct is an option where you can select <coughs> distinct from the source. If you enable this, Informatica eliminates duplicates at source level and gets the only unique rows into the Informatica platform. So these are the five properties that we, <coughs> we need to remember in the source qualifier transformation. SQL query, user user defined join, source filter, tracing level, sorry, source filter, number of sorted ports and select distinct. These are the five properties that we need to remember in the source qualifier transformation. I will show you the example for all these properties because <coughs> this the next this transformation is very important transformation in the next class. <coughs> So about theory, whatever I have told you right now, I mean most of the things I have told in the last class itself, I repeated that again here today. These four properties anyway new, we didn't discuss. <clears throat> so do you have any questions about these four properties? We will see the practicals in the tomorrow's class. No questions? No. Yeah. Sri, what about you? Yeah, it's clear, Mahesh. Okay. The <clears throat> we will see the practicals tomorrow for these things. Okay, sure. I mean, I, I don't want to stop it in the middle. I will show you the practicals for all these properties tomorrow's class. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>